In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create and edit a radial gradient using the gradient panel in Adobe Illustrator. I've already got the gold gradient pen nib artwork open. I created the linear gold gradient in a previous tutorial. There's a link to it in the extended description. It's a low resolution 72 PPI file that I might end up using on a web page. In the background, I've got a rectangle that fills the artboard. And if I click on it using the selection tool, then click on swatches to show the swatches panel, you'll see that I've applied one of the dark gray colors as a fill. Something else to be aware of in this tutorial, my swatches panel is available in this tutorial because I've selected the Essentials Classic Workspace from the Workspace pop-up menu. I want to add a radial gradient to this background rectangle, just to give a little bit more depth and visual interest to the backdrop. So with the rectangle still selected, I'll start by clicking on the default white black gradient in the swatches panel. That applies the standard white to black gradient from left to right, a linear gradient. Next, I'll click on the gradient panel to show it, and you'll see the type pop-up is set to linear by default. I'll click on the pop-up and select radial to get a standard radial gradient that runs from white at the center to black. Now I need to customize that to get the result I want to achieve. There are a couple of useful options I can select in the gradient panel itself. For example, I can click on the reverse gradient button to swap the colors around, but that's not what I want in this example. So I'll click the button again to toggle back to where it was. The aspect ratio control can produce some interesting variations on a standard radial gradient. You can either select a preset value from the pop-up menu for example, I'm going to select 30% and you'll see that this creates a more elliptical gradient, which can be very useful when you are trying to create subtle shading effects. You can type the value into the entry box if you want to, then press the tab key or the returned key to apply that. But I'm going to bring that back to 100%. Next, I don't want my gradient to run from pure white to pure black. I want it to be a bit more subtle. So I'll double click the start marker below and to the left of the gradient slider. Make sure that the swatches button is selected on the left of the flyout color panel that appears and I'll select a lighter gray. Then I'll double click on the end marker or color stop and I'll select a darker gray. To achieve some more control over this radial gradient, with the object still selected, I'll select the gradient tool from the tools panel. The radial gradient slider appears along with a dotted circumference line when my cursor is over the gradient that indicates the outer edge of the gradient. If I drag this circle marker on the left, I can control the extent or distance of the gradient. And the end marker on the gradient slider has the same effect. If I drag the top or bottom circle marker, I can change the aspect ratio manually. And the other technique that I've used in my other gradient tutorials is working with the gradient tool and the object selected to press and drag the mouse to define the center of the gradient and the extent or distance of the gradient. If I don't like the result I get, I can just press and drag to define the center point and the distance of the gradient again until I'm happy. So the last thing to do is to go to the panel menu button in the swatches panel, then select new swatch. Give that a name. And click OK. And there it is the new radial gradient swatch that I can now reuse whenever I need to. If you like, like, and I've got a number of other tutorial movies covering aspects of working with gradients available in my training stream channel.